Welcome to the third episode of Earth to Insight. I'm your host, Paul Archer. In this episode, we're going to do a really deep dive into the play to earn model, the paradigm shift that is set to take over the entire gaming industry. But to understand where we're headed, we've got to go back to the very beginning, to the dawn of gaming. The commercialization of computers led to the first somewhat basic computer games. Soon to follow were the first video game companies, with Nolan Bushnell and Ted Danby creating Atari and their first commercial success, Pong, being released in 1972. This 25 cent arcade game was an overnight success and was soon to see their profits rocket. Up until this point, pinball machines had dominated, but video games used less components and needed less servicing. They quickly became the hottest ticket in town. The influx of revenue spawned a myriad of new games and companies over the next few years, seeking to also cash in. We think of this era between 1978 and 1982 as the golden age of arcade games. Seminal classics like Pac-Man, Space Invaders and Donkey Kong all emerged in this era. And revenue from coin-operated video games jumped from $308 million in 1978 to $7.7 .7 billion in 1982, even causing a coin shortage in Japan. At the height of the arcade golden age, the worldwide video game industry was estimated to be worth as much as $35 billion, equivalent to over $118.5 billion today. These figures far surpassed the traditional mediums of music, $4 billion, and movies, $3 billion, to make gaming the dominant entertainment medium. Every man and his dog now wanted to be a video game producer, and this created a flurry of cheap, cloned, poorly constructed games, which oversaturated the market causing the 1983 video game crash. Consumer and corporate confidence in the video game market plummeted with revenue dropping a whopping 97% to $100 million by 1984. At the time, commentators and newspapers were writing video games off as a fad, something that would soon be forgotten. This very closely mirrors comments that would later be made about the internet, and these days about the metaverse. In 1985, Nintendo had arrived on the home console market, and they managed to reinvigorate the sector and start a whole new period of growth. By the early 90s, a console war had begun raging between Nintendo and Sega as they fought for market dominance. Sega had released the Genesis, their first 16-bit GPU console, with much higher resolution, stereo sound, alongside the first 3D games. It would take Nintendo another two years to release their 16-bit console. However, the first handheld devices emerged at this time, with Nintendo launching the Game Boy in 1989, which would go on in various versions to dominate the handheld market for the next 20 years. In the early 2000s, Microsoft had entered the market with the Xbox, and rapid advances in 3D and online capabilities would change gaming forever. Not to be outdone, Nintendo released the Wii, a console with motion sensing controls. Also in 2000, Maxis released The Sims game, giving players their first taste of a social simulation within a virtual world. It turned life into a video game, encouraging players to foster relationships, climb the corporate ladder and build homes. The widespread adoption of broadband internet by the late 2000s caused online PC gaming to expand exponentially. 
This increased bandwidth offered new capabilities for MMORPGs, massively multiplayer online role-playing games, and thus, battle royales began. Suddenly, internet-based computer games set in virtual worlds could be played by people from all over the planet at the same time, and they could interact with each other. This open-world concept gained popularity in this era, with games like GTA, Assassin's Creed, and World of Warcraft defining the genre. Pay-to-play subscription models, which had initially dominated, but once developers realized that purchasable in-game assets were generating more revenue than fees, the free-to-play models started to take over. Also emerging in the early 2000s, online multimedia platforms like Entropia Universe and Second Life not only built on open worlds, but they began offering real money economic opportunities to players for performing tasks, selling land, or developing in-game assets. These platforms, games, or worlds are early precursors to the play-to-earn model. Flashing forward to 2020, we see the emergence of the first early metaverse platforms like Decentraland and Sandbox. Riding high on the NFT boom, they were selling plots of virtual land for millions of dollars. And while certainly having an initial swell of interest, these early platforms were plagued with loading issues, clunky graphics, lack of content, and low customer retention. However, recent developments in AI, blockchain, scalability, and edge computing does seem to be addressing these issues, enabling interoperable real-time photorealistic worlds that are synchronous and persistent, with our identity, data, history, and entitlements being recorded across all metaverse projects. We're not quite there yet, but the end goal is fast approaching. In the first five months of 2022, over $120 billion was spent on developing the metaverse. To put that into perspective, that's $800 million a day being spent to make the metaverse a reality. In 2023, over 44% of all Web3 venture capital was invested in metaverse-related companies. Global tech companies, e-commerce platforms, digital media and gaming companies, as well as consulting and financial firms are all watching this space closely and investing heavily. It's 50 years after the first experiments into video games, so it's rather fitting that we may be about to witness the second golden age of video games. Although gamification elements will feature prominently in how we interact, shop, learn, and create, it would be too simplistic to categorize metaverse projects as merely video games. These decentralized worlds will encompass retail, training, advertising, gaming, cryptocurrency, tourism, education, art, music, fitness, and much more. Thus, many of the people using the metaverse will not be gamers, or even play games. There are four distinct business models within the gaming industry. The first is the pay to play model, and this requires users to either buy the game or pay a subscription for access. The developers receive a percentage of these fees, the players receive only the experience of the game. The second is the free to play model, this business model now has over 80% of the market share, allowing users to download and play for free. Developers earn revenue by selling in-game assets, lives, or products, as well as a percentage of any advertising revenue. The third model is the play and earn. This model is more focused on game experience, but it does allow players to earn small amounts through engagement or processes. The fourth model is play to earn. And for those who want to earn money online, this is clearly the favorite, rewarding players with in-game currency, fiat, cryptocurrency, or tokens. So how does the play to earn model actually work? Utilizing blockchain technology, developers and players are able to track ownership, deduct fees or royalties, and mint NFTs. Play to earn games have an in-game economy or ecosim, digital assets and governance tokens, 
all contained within a virtual world on a blockchain network. Whether players have created items, rented space, run classes or events, or have accumulated experience points or abilities, these all have value, which can then be sold and withdrawn as fiat or cryptocurrency. A great example of this model is the Earth2 platform, where players can earn through a variety of means, including staking, mining, raiding, trading, or selling virtual real estate. One of the pioneering crypto games was Axie Infinity. In 2019, they introduced the popular gamification mechanics that we know now. Then in 2020, they introduced the AXS token for use inside and outside the game to facilitate transactions and as rewards. This could be held in the Ronin wallet. Axie Infinity was named Blockchain Game of the Year in 2020. And 2021, their token rode the wave to an all-time high price of $160 and at one point also recorded 2.7 million daily active users. People in third world nations playing the game were now able to monetize their efforts and in the Philippines, revenue from crypto gaming exceeded money being sent home by migrant workers. However, by the spring of 2022, the bottom had fallen out of the crypto market, making their token almost worthless. In March, another disaster struck the platform when a hacker successfully targeted the bridge between Ronin wallets and Ethereum quickly drawing out over $600 million from the network. Even though the parent company Sky Mavis returned users' funds, it demoralized the user base and saw it shrink to about 760,000 players. Questions of unsustainability and security certainly caused many to lose faith, but this model is still in its infancy and will pivot and modify many times before perfecting. Although nowhere near where it once was, Axie Infinity is still holding its space and is even part of the Cloud9 eSports tournament roster. Axie Infinity is by no means the only play-to-earn game out there. Other titles include Sandbox, Alien World, Splinterlands and Phantom Galaxies, with many more like Earth 2 still in pre-alpha or alpha stages. I think Earth 2's model is unique because they focused on creating a huge amount of utility for their token within the platform, making it more resilient to external market factors. In fact, you may potentially be able to earn more by using their Essence token on the platform rather than just selling it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. But it is worth clarifying that I'm not a financial advisor and none of what I'm sharing should be perceived as financial advice. So I strongly encourage you to do your own research and never commit more than you can afford to be without or even lose. That being said, let's look at the estimates for future growth within the metaverse. Over the next few years, virtual land prices are expected to achieve a compound annual growth rate of 31.2% by 2028, while estimates of the metaverse's revenue range wildly from $1.3 trillion to $13 trillion. It's clear that any platform obtaining even a fraction of that market will find it extremely lucrative. One of the major barriers to mass adoption has been the unfamiliarity of the general public with crypto or digital wallets. Earth to address this issue by allowing withdrawals to credit cards, bank accounts and virtual cards like Revolut. Cryptocurrency purchases and withdrawals are also possible through the Rocket Fuel crypto payment portal. The metaverse is growing at an ever-expanding rate and opportunities within it may only be limited by your imagination or skill set.